We have had a difficult week at Central Christian Church this week as the two candles on the communion table remind us. Pastor Elizabeth will be lifting up our joys and our concerns this Sunday. And so after having had such a week, I'm mindful of the psalmist's words who said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because I have found that if I can make it to Sunday, I can make it through the next week. And if I get to the next Sunday, I can do the next one. It's sort of like standing and stepping across rocks through a creek. You can make it all the way across without getting wet. And if you live your life Sunday by Sunday, amidst God's people and God's word and music and prayer, you can make it all the way through life, its heights and its depths. The Lord has called us to worship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand and join our voices in song. Good morning and welcome again to Central Christian Church. It's a joy to be in worship with you, whether you are with us in person or online this morning. If you have not already taken the opportunity, if you're here in person, to sign the registration pad, we'd love to hear from you. And those online can certainly post a comment and let us know you're with us this morning. Our red table is back in the gathering area. For those of you who don't know, our red table out in the gathering area holds all kinds of current information. Every Sunday you will find new information there that's important to the ministries going on in the life of the church. So I invite you to stop by that table on your way out this morning. If you didn't catch it on your way in, you'll find information about Realm, our new way of connecting as a church, an online app directory for you to be part of. So I hope you'll stop by and pick up that flyer and also learn about our Let's All Read opportunity. Our justice ministry has been inspired by our Sunday school classes that have been doing many book studies over the last year and years. And so they are sponsoring a Let's All Read through August and September. And then at the end of September, they will host a moderated discussion. The book that has been chosen is called The Third Reconstruction, 
how a moral movement is overcoming the politics of division and fear. This is by Reverend Dr. William Barber, uh, a disciples minister, and so I hope you'll consider being part of this reading opportunity. There are books available for you if you need it when you sign up, or you can order them on Amazon. I'll remind you also that your communion is in the pew backs and can be accessed by lifting the cellophane to get to the bread and then the foil to get to the cup. And we ask that you take those with you and discard the empties uh, when you leave this morning. Also want to remind you that on September 12th, it is our intention still to return to two services. So our 8.30 crew can come back and we'll see you then. And Sunday school opportunities will also be available in person. As David mentioned, we have two candles on our communion table. Our community has lost two beautiful women this week. Jean Mickler passed away on Monday, leaving her husband of 75 years to grieve her. So we extend our sympathy this morning to Carl Mickler and his family. Then on Tuesday, very unexpectedly, our beloved Pam Hammonds passed away active in our choir and in, as a teacher in Kids Central and in cultivating mindfulness and in many other ministries of the church, I know that this loss touches many of our hearts. So we extend our sympathy this morning also to Pam's husband, Gary Hammonds, her son, Russ, and the Hammonds family runs deep and wide at Central. The Ballard family is the Hammonds family. Diane Ballard is Pam's niece. And Pam's sister-in-law, Anne, is in the nursery with our children. You are all in our prayers. We extend our sympathy also to Judy Reagan in the death of her son-in-law, Bill Garmer, and lift up those who are in hospital, remembering Charlie St. Germain, who remains at Norton Hospital in Louisville, uh, Beth Barney, who was admitted to Baptist Health, and John Tackett Sr., who was dismissed after hip surgery uh, to rehab at the Willows. I also lift up Elaine Bronner's husband, Tom, who is hospitalized, and others in our community who are not hospitalized but remain in need of our prayer, Katie Laddick, who is experiencing debilitating pain, Sarah Hall, who is beginning treatment for breast cancer, Marlene Young, who has some health issues, and Linda Sutherland, who is anticipating a procedure on her legs on August 12th. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, who moves in and through us, we praise you for your steadfast presence in our lives. For so many reasons, sometimes we lose sight of you. Sometimes we cry out as the psalmist did and as Jesus did, why have you forsaken me? Sometimes our circumstances overwhelm us and we simply cannot fathom your presence. Still, we trust that you do come to us in our grief. You carry us in our shock. You tend to us when our bodies are sick and broken. You love us in our fragility, and you remain with us even when we disappoint you. Your comfort, your grace, and your persistent love help us find our way through times that seem unnavigable, and we are grateful. We seek your grace upon us now, especially as we have named so many in our company who are suffering with heartache, fear, and illness. Love your people again today, we pray. Love us in our hurting. Love us in our failings. Love us, Lord, toward healing and wholeness. Help us also to love one another well. For we seek your leading as we try to be followers of Christ in this world. We confess we are not always open to seeing our, in ourselves and others the light and the good you see. Forgive us when we deny you by refusing to see the you in us. 
We ask that you help us to recognize your living spirit in one another. Open our eyes to the gifts you have planted in us and those you have given others. We are your unique creations called to your purpose. And we pray that you would help us, whatever gifts and whatever our state of life, to live in ways that reflect your loving goodness in us. Guide us, O Lord, our creator, to find our place, our passion, our purpose in building up your holy kingdom. Redeem us from our avoidance of your call on our lives and our refusal to accept that you have designed us as part of the body of Christ. Grant that we would support and encourage one another as we strive together to live as people in your name. Help us to be for one another your arms that embrace, your ears that listen and hear, your heart that shares compassion. For God, we are in need of such caring help as we make our way through this wondrous life you have given us. Make us to be for one another and for the world eager activists, voices that advocate for justice, creative teachers, curious learners, and simply Christians, Christians who care for the God-given life in all creation. These things we pray in the name of your Son who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of our scripture. This morning's passage comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week we began an August worship series that we're titling A Deep Dive into Ephesians. Our teacher for this series is Professor Paul of Tarsus. Our text is the letter to the Ephesians. The test on this course will be how we apply what we have learned from this first century letter to our living in the 21st century. 
Last week we focused on what Paul learned is the mission of the church, and that is to implement God's plan for the ages, which is to unite all things, things in heaven and on earth, in Christ Jesus. And to that end of uniting all things, last week we focused on how Paul begged us, that was the verb, he begged us to be people who have an attitude, (laughs) not an attitude that foments division or animosity, but an attitude marked by humility and gentleness and patience, forbearing one another in love. Which brings us to this week's lesson from Professor Paul, in which we learn, as Elizabeth read, that God equips us for this calling of being unifiers by complementing that attitude of gentleness and patience and humility with certain aptitudes. We are to be people of attitude and aptitude. Aptitudes abilities, competencies. As Elizabeth read, each of us, each of us, all of us, were given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Paul says, when Jesus ascended on high, he gave gifts to people. Think of that, a gift with your name on it to you from Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, these these gifts are called spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts. They're God-given aptitudes or, or competencies or skills or talents that are given to each and every one of us that, that provide us with the aptitude, with the ability to go and do what God would have us do in this world. As Paul put it in his letter to the Corinthians, now about spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. There are different kinds of gifts, he says, but each one of you is given one or more of them for the common good. Each of us given one or more of these spiritual gifts for the common good. So what are they, these spiritual gifts? Paul names them in various of his letters, and I'm going to name a few of them, and as I name them, I invite you to think about certain people that you know in your life who have evidenced these gifts, or to recognize, hey, I think that's something that I do. So listen to some of the spiritual gifts, the gift of teaching, The gift of wisdom, being insightful. The gift of mercy, the capacity to be compassionate and and caring. The gift of healing, of body, mind, and spirit. The gift of hospitality, people who have the ability to to set up space to provide fellowship and food that makes people feel welcome and and invited. The gift of helps, it's called helps. People who are willing to do whatever it takes. Folks who say, just tell me what needs to be done. Behind the scenes, no acclamation needed, just tell me how I can help. The gift of helps. The gift of intercession. People who have a passion for prayer. Leadership is one of the spiritual gifts, the the ability to to cast a vision for people and to to motivate them and help guide them towards the, the coming to reality of that vision. The gift of giving, being able to give of your means generously and and cheerfully. The gift of encouragement being able to stand at another's side and to strengthen them with the tone of your voice and the bearing of your your presence. The gift of craftsmanship, being able to create and design and build things 
that can bless others. The gift of prophecy is in the Bible, not foretelling the future, but telling forth a relevant word from God that speaks to some issue of perhaps personal morality or social justice, naming God's desires for a life or for a society. The gift of music and the arts as avenues for proclaiming beauty and and truth. The gift of administration. It's not paper shuffling. The New Testament says there is a gift of administration, the ability to, to plan and to implement goals and to pay attention to details so that what is planned is accomplished. That's just a sample of of the spiritual gifts. You may want to go home this afternoon and sometime and Google spiritual gifts inventory because there's these little tests, they're fun to take, that will help suggest to you what your spiritual gifts may be. I Googled spiritual gifts inventory inventory this week, and it turned up 3,490,000 hits in half a second. You know, Google shows that. So choose one of those 3,490,000 responses. See, what's that, Elizabeth? Amen, we do. We do. We have one at Central. And just see what your spiritual gift may be. The point not to be missed is that there are all kinds of tasks that need to be accomplished in furthering God's purpose for the fullness of time to to unite all things. And God has provided us all with aptitudes, certain gifts that we alone can contribute to the furthering of this purpose. I want you to note that no one of us has all the gifts that are necessary to do God's work in this world. And none of us have none of the gifts. That means all that we have received together must complement one another. So that together as we complement one another's gifts, as a church, as the body of Christ, we can accomplish God's purposes in this world. I mentioned this biblical promise that, that all of us have received one or more gifts Because sadly, some people have become convinced that they have no gift to offer. Believing such a lie has two devastating consequences. It diminishes the self-esteem of the individual person who doesn't think she or he has a gift. And it also diminishes the ministry of the church. Because the church is missing out on the gift that you have to give. I ache for people, ache for people who've convinced themselves or who have allowed someone else to convince them that they have no gift, nothing to offer. Maybe as a child or in their formative adolescent years or or sometime in adulthood, they heard someone tell them, That they were nothing, failure, screw up, that they had nothing to offer and they believed what they were told. No. Somebody said one time, everybody is a 10 somewhere. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that with all my heart. And so whenever someone joins the church, a new person steps into the life of the church, I'm always sort of asking myself, I wonder what gifts they're bringing to the body of Christ. It's like Christmas morning, y'all. Here's a wrapped present to Central from God. What gifts is this person bringing to the life of the church. You know, some of us compare our gifts with others. We do the comparison game, and we always feel like our gifts aren't as good as someone else's. Or some of us can't imagine that our God-given aptitude, what we're good at, what we're passionate about, has any value whatsoever. Can't see what 
how what we do and love to do can contribute to the, the growth of the church or its upbuilding in love. Or, or some of us may feel that we've aged out of using our gifts. Can't do what we used to and we can't imagine what we can offer now. But most tragic of all, some don't share their gifts because a church somewhere made them feel that they were unwelcome or unwanted. Talking about women in explicitly patriarchal churches who hear there's no place for your talent if you weren't born with a Y chromosome, for heaven's sake. Talking about youth who may hear, you're the church of tomorrow, but they're the church of today too with gifts to give, talking about our LGBTQ brothers and sisters whose God-given gifts and graces have been rebuffed and rejected. Or I'm thinking of those new to a congregation who got the strong impression that they needed to wait several decades before they could offer their gifts, and then several more decades after that until they'd be invited to offer leadership, which is why I give thanks for Central Christian Church. This is a church where people of all ages and genders and backgrounds and sexual orientation and races and creeds who desire to offer their gifts are welcome to do so and do. I give thanks for Central's wide-armed welcome and evocation of everybody's gifts. Now those words may take some getting used to that everybody has been given a gift that they can offer to the flourishing of the church because there is a widespread notion out there that God didn't give gifts to everybody after all, but rather to only a few select people that have the letters REV in front of their names and seminary degrees and ordination certificates on the wall. As if people like Elizabeth and me have been given all the gifts for the upbuilding of the church and serving others, whereas the rest of y'all lay members have just received sort of table scraps and crumbs. Au contraire. That ain't true. Not true. Paul says, and I quote, the gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Do you see that Elizabeth and I and pastor types are gifted in order to evoke and turn loose all of your gifts? To equip the saints, that's you by the way, for the work of ministry. It reminds me of a moment at a general assembly of the Christian church, Disciples of Christ. Gosh, this was decades ago. General assembly is every other year disciples from around the country and Canada and around the world get together in one place for worship and for fellowship and for learning and to be honest, for fussing. <laughs> Over this issue or that, they put up microphones with green signs and red signs and you speak up for or, or against. And I remember one motion that came up. I don't even remember what the content of it was. And there was a man that lined up behind one of the mics and when he came to the microphone and was asked to, to introduce himself, he began by saying, I'm just a lay person, but, and I noticed his posture. He was sort of standing, sort of stoop-shouldered, apologetically, with his head down. He says, I'm, I'm just a lay person, but, and to the moderator's eternal credit, the moderator interrupted and said, Brother, did I just hear you say that you're just a layperson? Brother, there's no such thing as a layperson, just a layperson, in the Christian church 
disciples of Christ. God's grace, he said, has been given to each of us according to Christ's gift. I believe you're someone who has received a gift from God that you're prepared now to offer with the other 7,000 of us who are here this morning. Please continue. I'm all ears. And I noticed that that man's posture changed. He stood up, put his shoulders back, held his head, said what he wanted to say. As if for the first time it really sunk in that he, he had received a unique gift from God that he alone could use to speak and to act in ways that would bless others and make a difference in this world. And so it was that, that I have seen now across the years on some churches' websites, on their sort of staff page, something that reads, it says, pastors, reverend so-and-so and reverend thus-and-such, ministers, the members of the congregation. Ooh, I just love that. That gets it right. That gets it right. Years ago, I cut out a quote that I think captures the right relationship between those of us who have received gifts to be pastors and the rest of the congregation, and it reads, leaders have a talent for drawing people out of the bleachers and onto the playing field and then making sure that they're in the right positions to make a maximum difference for the kingdom. I love that. Amen to that. Speaking of people using their God-given gifts for producing a maximum difference, people gifted by God who from their baptisms and throughout their lives claimed and cultivated and shared their gifts and graces, their attitude and their aptitudes with others. Speaking of such people, Pam Hammonds. Pam Hammonds. We lost two saints this week at Central. Two women who, as Elizabeth shared with us, died within 24 hours of of each other. First, Jean Mickler, and then Pam Hammonds. Jean services here four o'clock this afternoon, and Elizabeth and I will enumerate during that service Jean's gifts that she received from God and, and shared. Pam's service will be announced in the weeks to come, but Pam was a woman with God-given attitude and aptitudes who blessed others and glorified God. Pam had the gift of teaching, which she used throughout her life. She was a lifelong learner, not for self-aggrandizement to get more information, but so that she would have more to share with others. She taught Sunday school here at Central for a generation of Central's children, blessed by her teaching and just last month she began a term as the chair of our faith formation ministry area. She had a gift for music, sang in our choir, made a joyful noise to the Lord. Whenever I turn and speak to the choir, I love most of the faces that I look at. <laughs> And, and Pam always had this wonderful expression on her face. And she served on the board of the Central Music Academy for years so that others in this community who are underprivileged can exercise their gift of, of music. And she had the gift of faith. The Bible says there is a, a gift of, of faith and she cultivated her spiritual growth through participation in cultivating mindfulness every Wednesday. And she served on our worship ministry area so that we could experience dynamic and vibrant worship every, every Sunday. Hers was a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And we know that it was the spirit of the Lord that imparted to Pam 
the attitude of gentleness and humility and patience and bearing up in love and the aptitudes that blessed us by her presence in her life for so many years. She was a gift that kept on giving. Years ago, I remember a girl in one of my pastor's classes who, was, who when she was asked, why do you want to be baptized, wrote on her sheet of paper, I feel it's time for the peace that is my life to be fit into God's puzzle. Twelve-year-old, I feel it's time for the peace that is my life to be fit into God's puzzle. My goodness, hit the golden buzzer, somebody. I mean, she got it. She got what Paul was saying. She understood and accepted that she was gifted with an aptitude to be shared with others for the common good, to build up the body of Christ and to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the the bond of peace. What a gift to the church and to the world she promised to be. May she follow in the footsteps of her sisters, Jean and Pam. May all of us let all God's gifted people say, One of the spiritual gifts that are listed in the New Testament is the gift of hospitality, the ability to offer space, food, space for fellowship, place where people can feel welcome and and comfortable. On the night before his arms were extended on On a cross, Jesus extended his arms at a table in an upper room to extend hospitality to his disciples, all of them, every one of them. We remember his hospitality each Sunday as he offers us the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. He offers it again with arms extended to all this Sunday. Julia, as one who herself has the gift of hospitality, would you pray for us? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is a great challenge to speak the truth in agape love, the kind of love that puts the welfare of others first. 
Our temptation is to speak the truth so sharply that it wounds rather than heals. The opposite temptation is to avoid conflict by avoiding difficult conversations altogether. Speaking the truth in love is a godly thing. Truth spoken in love stands a chance of being heard, whereas truth spoken without love is almost certain to be rejected. Paul speaks of apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers as some of the members of the body. In Corinthians, he talks about human bodies having many members, feet, hands, ears, eyes, noses, each of these being vital to the welfare of the body at large. So also, each of us, each member of the church is important, each working together to create Christ's spiritual body. As we eat this bread and drink the cup, help us to realize that it is important for us to respect each individual member of the body of Christ so that each believer is enabled to contribute according to the gifts given them and that the multiplied gifts of the many are fitted and knit together to serve the, the whole. Thank you for this example of agape love, the kind of love that makes it possible for us to hold our tempers when things don't go our way. It makes us possible for us to avoid selfish, self-destructive behavior and reminds us that we are all an important part of Christ's body in our church and in our world. Amen. That night in the upper room, Jesus gave thanks for the bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And after the supper, he gave thanks for the fruit of the vine and he poured it out. He gave it to his disciples saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Almighty God, for the grace of your spirit, knitting us together as members of one body, that we might be today the body of Christ in this world. We thank you now for this sustenance that we have received from this bread and cup. Nourish each one of us and call forth from each one of us as we leave this table the use of our gifts to glorify you and bless others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Received a wonderful email late this week, Elizabeth and I, from Steve Rice. Had a picture, had a little story. The story was this. The Georgetown, let me make sure I get this right. The Georgetown Gathering Place Mission had a need for some mattresses for putting up people overnight just so happened that there was a connection made between the Georgetown Mission and Central Christian Church because across the years with our hosting of Room in the Inn, which is our ministry of providing overnight lodging and beds and meals for men in Lexington, that we have gathered several extra mattresses across the years. We were gifted with some new ones just a few years ago. Just so happened that the folks at the Georgetown Rescue Mission got connected with Central and it just so happened that we had some extra mattresses and it just so happened on a certain day of this week that Steve Rice was here downstairs and it just so happened they had volunteers and a truck that they could come down and it just so happened that that truck was able to hold 32 mattresses which was exactly how many that we had. 
just, just so happened. You've heard, haven't you, that coincidence is God's way of maintaining anonymity. <laughs> These kind of things just so happen to happen. Let us give thanks that we can be a part of them. Spirit of the living God, sweet, sweet Spirit in this place, melt us, mold us, fill us. Lord, use us, use our mattresses, use our Steve Rices, use our gifts to participate in the unfolding of your purposes in this world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.
And now go forth and may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. message asking if I'm planning to attend this month's men's lunch. It's, uh, it's on the 16th, right? Do we have anything that day? The 16th? I think so. Um, actually, I think I saw it in the chime that it's on the 20th. The 20th? Yeah. You know, I can never get this. I wish that we had an updated calendar online where we can register for events and so that the staff knows who's going to attend in advance. But I guess that's beyond the realm of possibility. Did someone say the realm of possibility? Whoa! Whoa where did you come from? I'm the Wiz from the realm of possibilities. Did you need help with something? Um, yeah, actually, we just kind of wanted, wish that we had uh, a calendar maybe on our phone or something online where we can see upcoming events and register in advance. Well, you're in luck. There's an app for that. With the Realm Connect app, you can get a live calendar for all your church events. You can also register online to let your staff members know who's attending and pay for events if necessary. Wow. wow. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. For more information, you can go to centralchristianlex.org to find helpful instructional videos and even more information. And you can be welcome into the realm of possibility. <laughs> Ha 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 